Okay, so again we look here. Cosine of 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6, okay, remember is, this is 1 pi. And to go around again is 2 pi. 2 pi would be 12 pi over 6. But we are 1 short. 1 pi over 6 short. So that is the pi over 6 right here. To go 11 pi over 6 is to go this far. And pi over 6 is to go all the way. Now, pi over 6 is one of our special triangles. So opposite that is 1. In our case, it's negative 1. Because we're in this quadrant, which is quadrant number 4. Then the hypotenuse is 2. And the adjacent is root 3. We want cosine of 11 pi over 6, so we want the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which turns out to be root 3 over 2. All right, let's move forwards. Example 2. If cosine of theta is equal to negative 7 over 25, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi, you ask to evaluate theta to the nearest hundredth. Also, you're asked to state the six trigonometric ratios that apply to this question. So we have cosine, so we'll need sine, cosine, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So let's go through all of this. First of all, draw this. Cosine of theta is negative in two quadrants, one of them being in, the, in this quadrant, which is the second quadrant, the other time being in the third quadrant. All right, so note that root negative 7 is the adjacent, 25 is the hypotenuse. Theta will represent the angle from standard position, either this one or the black angle would be this one. The idea is that there are two possible angles that we could have here, which will yield us the same result. So, we now need to evaluate theta. How big is theta? Well, looking at the green one, we need to see the following. Sine of theta, so this is the reference angle, the sine of this theta is equal to a certain value. Cosine of theta we already know, and tangent of theta, which we need to know. All right. We also need cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta. With that, we find the values. In black and green, we need to find these values. So, first option is to look at sine theta. Before we do that, though, we're going to need to do something. Using, you guessed it, Pythagorean theorem, we need to evalu evaluate the y value for both the black and the green uh, triangle. So, using Pythagorean theorem, luck, lo and behold, lucky for us, we find out that y is equal to the plus or minus square root, plus or minus of 24. Positive 24 if it's in green, negative 24 if it's in red. So, sine theta is 24 over 25. Cosine theta is equal to negative uh, 7 over 25. Tangent of theta is equal to 24 over 25. Sorry, negative 24 over 7. And we do the same for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And now we need to do the... And these values here represent the six trigonometric ratios. We do the same for when, it's, for when the angle would be in the third quadrant. And here, lo and behold, here are our values. Okay, some of them change because, again, it's in a different quadrant, but this idea stays the same. Now, we need to find the value of theta. Uh, excuse me. So how do we do that? Well, we need to take the cos inverse of negative 7 over 25. Let's say we did it for that. We get a value of 106.2602 degrees. Lucky for us... We can look at this angle and say, oh, we're now in the second quadrant. Well, knowing this, we can now convert this to radians because that's what we want the answer to be in. So, to convert it to radians, you take the degrees and multiply it by pi over 180 to calculate in radians. To do that, 
we end up getting 1.85 ratings. Think about it. Does this answer make sense? To go all the way around is 2 pi radians. Pi is 6.28. Multiply it by 2, that's pretty big. What about halfway? Halfway is 3.14. We don't really want to go all the way halfway. So 3.14, this is not all the way to 3.14, so, but we're getting closer. All right. So this angle is the angle in theta, sorry, the angle theta in degrees. This is the angle theta in radians. Both of these are for the green theta that we saw in the last question. So for this example right here, this green theta right here in the triangle. All right, let's go back to the next question. And we need to find the value of the black theta. To do that, keep in mind, so from here to here, so the green one goes from here to here, the 106.2602 degrees. Well, you should know that that is the same as the negative rotation of this line. So I know the negative value, and I can find out that theta is equal to 360 minus, so minus 106.2602 degrees to find out exactly what the value will be, which will turn out to be 4.43 radians. That is the value, arc length of the... Uh, the arc length of the value that we're looking for. So 4.43 radians is 1, the other one is 1.85 radians. So those are your two answers. Now here's some examples, page 331, number 7, which I altered just a little bit. The terminal arm of an airplane in standard position passes through a certain point. Find the primary trigonometric ratios and the radius value of the angle. In, in, in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So, 6 negative 1 is located in the fourth quadrant. And you need to find the exact primary trigonometric ratios. To do that, we need to find the R value. So, using Pythagorean theorem, we find the value of R. R is equal to the square root of 36. The same goes for the blue now. We're going to find this angle. To do that, we know that... Okay, so here we go. This is the primary trigonometric ratios for 1 over root 37. Negative 1 over root 37, 6 over root 37, and finally the last one, which is an avid reader, tan theta is equal to negative 1 over 6. Fortune for us, it's an easy answer. All right. Either way, we find out the value of theta is going to be two possible answers. 360 minus 9.4623. That will be the value of um, theta in degrees. Multiply by pi over 180, and you end up with 6.12 radians. And that would be the angle measured from standard position. All right. A clock is showing the time is exactly 1 p.m., 3 p.m., and 25 seconds. So exactly 3 p.m. and 25 seconds. Because a full minute has not passed since 3 o'clock, the hour hand is pointed directly at the 3, and the motion hand is pointing directly at the 12, sorry, minute hand. If the tip of the second hand is directly below the tip of the other hand, and if the length of the second hand is 9 centimeters, what is the length of the hour hand? So that's what we need to find out. Well, what we do here is we can draw triangles. 90 Okay, so we're going to fill in 9 centimeters is this value right here. 60 degrees is here. And we know that if I use trig ratios, I know that it takes 
one second every six degrees. So one second every six degrees means that when I calculate it, cosine of 60 is equal to h over 9. Cosine of 60 using special triangles is 1 over 2 is equal to h over 9. So multiply it across, you get 9 over 2 is equal to h. So the hour hand is exactly 4.5 centimeters long. All right, last one. The needle of a compass makes an angle of four radians with the line passing east from the center of the compass. The tip of the handle is 4.2 centimeters away. Below the line represents pointing west from the corner of the compass. How long is the needle in the nearest hundredth of a centimeter? So, this is all the information here that we need to find. And once you're done that, you calculate it according to Kish formula. The Kish formula says, okay, calculate the value. And note I don't write anything in my calculator till the very last minute. But ultimately, the needle, the haste, uh, the needle is 5.55 centimeters long. So this question, folks, is a way to solve the problem using algebra without actually having to type it in the calculator. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Have a good night.